Welcome to TMF Declaration Fundamentals. In this video, we will go through how to complete each section of your motor vehicle's declaration form. Let's begin. Select the motor vehicle's declaration form from your task list. This will take you to the section menu for this form. At the top of the screen, you will see which declaration form you are currently in, as well as your agency name and details of this year's declaration campaign. If any of these details are incorrect, please contact your internal TMF declarations coordinator or your eye care client engagement manager. There are a total of three sections in the motor vehicles form. Motor vehicles by category, motor vehicles indemnity, and the excess franchise sections. If you are a coordinator, all three sections will initially be assigned to you and you can choose to either complete them yourself or delegate any number of them as required. If you are a delegate, you will only see the sections that have been assigned to you by your coordinator. Let's now have a look at each section in a bit more detail. Click on the Motor Vehicles by Category section. Your motor vehicle's policy number will appear in the middle of the screen. Please check this is correct. If not, please contact your internal TMF declarations coordinator or your eye care client engagement manager. Scroll down and read the instructions in blue. These contain important information about how to complete this section. Scroll back up to the on-screen grid. You should see any vehicles that you declared last year listed here. Please update your previously declared values for each vehicle category or add new records as required. If you have any special vehicles, or any vehicles with an individual replacement cost exceeding 200000 please make sure to declare them in this grid. For detailed guidance on what is required for each field, click on the Download Instructions button in the section menu, or refer to the links provided at the end of this video. If the total volume, or the total replacement value of all your declared vehicles varies by over 15% compared to the previous year, you will be asked to provide an explanation for this variation. Please provide clear and detailed answers. You will then be asked to confirm if your agency owns or leases any special vehicles or any vehicles with an individual replacement cost exceeding 200000 If you answer yes to either of these two questions, you will be asked to provide additional detail for these types of vehicles either on screen within the declaration system or by populating a system generated Excel template and uploading it back into the system. To complete your declaration on screen, select the on screen option, click generate registry grid and then click OK in the pop up window. This will populate the on screen grid with relevant data you declared in relation to this question last year. Please ensure you carefully review and update your current assets and do not add new assets if you've already declared them previously. If you do need to add a new record, click the Add New Record button. To delete a newly added record, click on the blue trash icon on the left of the row. The on-screen grid has a combination of free text and drop-down fields including mandatory fields which will show up in red. As a minimum, you will need to populate the mandatory fields to be able to complete this section. For detailed guidance on what is required for each field, click on the Download Instructions button in the section menu, or refer to the links provided at the end of this video. If you want to edit a specific asset, you can click Ctrl F and search for a keyword. Please note, this will only search for the records displayed on the page. 
You can also sort the contents of each column in ascending or descending order by clicking on the heading of that column. This may be a good way to check for duplicates. Please do not delete any previously declared line items. If you no longer own or have an interest in a particular line item, please mark the status of that line item as inactive. To help you navigate the grid, use the navigation controls at the bottom to scroll left and right, select the number of records to be displayed per page, or toggle between pages if these controls are available. You can also press tab on your keyboard to move left to right along a row when entering data. You can also lock individual columns in the grid by clicking on the lock icon in the column heading. This only works from left to right. To make it easier to view your on-screen registry grid, you can expand it into full screen view by clicking on the blue box at the top of the grid. To exit this view, click on the blue box again. If at any time you need to save your progress or exit your session, click on the Back to Menu button on the bottom left of your screen. This will automatically save any data you have entered in the section so far and will return you to the section menu. You can also choose to declare your special or high value vehicles using a system generated Excel template. To do this, select the Excel template option. Please note, if you decide to switch from the on-screen option to the Excel template option halfway through entering your data, any changes you have made in the on-screen grid will be lost. Once you select the Excel template option, click Download Data Entry Spreadsheet. Please allow a bit of time for the Excel template to download. Click on the downloaded Excel file. Please allow a bit of time for the Excel file to open. Then click Enable Editing and then Enable Content as required. This will pre-populate the template with any data you declared for this question last year. Please ensure you save a copy of the Excel file locally on your computer when you first download it, for use as your working version. Click Save As in the File menu and select where you want to save the file. You must ensure that the file remains in macro format when you save it. This will allow you to upload the document back into the system once you're finished with it. You may be prompted with an error message when saving the file if the spreadsheet contains any incorrectly completed or missing mandatory fields. Simply press OK and proceed to save the file to your preferred location. You can now edit the data in Excel or add new records as required. The Excel template has the same combination of free text, drop-down and mandatory fields as the on-screen grid. For detailed guidance on what is required for each field, click on the Download Instructions button in the section menu or refer to the links provided at the end of this video. Please note, the blank rows that don't contain any records are highlighted in the same color as the mandatory fields in the rows that do contain records. You are not required to populate any data into the blank rows unless you need to add a record. Please never delete any previously declared line items. If you no longer own or have an interest in a particular line item, please mark the status of that line item as inactive. If you need to delete a new entry, double-click on any field in that row and click Yes to delete that row. You will see three buttons in the top left of the spreadsheet. Click on the Instructions tab below for information on what each of these buttons does 
as well as guide us on how to sort and filter the data in this template. The ability to sort and filter is an enhancement we've introduced to make it easier for agencies with larger data sets to use the Excel template more effectively. You can now use the sort and filter functions to help you find the relevant record you want to edit or to identify duplicate entries. You can also search for the relevant record by clicking Ctrl F and typing in the keyword you want to search for. The Validate button will run a check on the template for any incorrectly entered or missing mandatory fields and will produce an error message if any are found. The relevant fields will be marked with a comment for your attention. To locate the fields that contain errors, go to the Review tab and press Next Note or Next Comment to go to the next field that needs to be updated. The validation check will also automatically run every time you save your Excel file. For additional detail on the types of errors flagged by the validation check, please refer to the Instructions document in the section menu. The Reset button will reset the contents of the spreadsheet back to what was originally generated by the system. This will remove any changes you may have made since you downloaded the spreadsheet. You cannot undo a reset. The only way to recover your changes is to exit without saving to go back to the last saved version of your spreadsheet. The Clear button will delete all data in the spreadsheet. You cannot undo a clear. You can only reset to the original download of content or exit without saving to go back to the last saved version of your spreadsheet. You should not need to use the reset or clear functions to complete your declaration. We suggest to avoid these altogether and to only use the validate, sort and filter functions as required. Every time you save your template, the validation check will automatically run in the background. You must ensure that the validation check is successful before you upload your completed Excel template back to the declaration system. If this is not done, the file will be rejected during upload. Once you have finished populating your template, confirm that the validation check is successful, save your file and close it. Then click Select File back in the Declaration System, open the relevant document and click Upload. If you upload the wrong file, you can delete it by clicking on the black bin icon next to the file name. Please note, if you switch back to the on-screen grid, after you have uploaded your completed Excel template, your uploaded file will be removed. It is best to determine up front which completion method works best for you so that you don't have to switch later on. Once you have entered all the required details in this section, the Complete Section button will appear on the bottom right of your screen. Click this to go back to your list of assigned motor vehicles form sections. The section you have just completed will be marked with a pink checkbox. Its status will be updated and the section will be locked. If you need to go back and edit any content in this section, you will need to first click on the pink checkbox to unlock it. Let's now have a look at the Motor Vehicles Indemnity section. Select Yes if you are declaring any motor vehicles in this year's declaration. This will bring up some additional questions on the usage of your declared vehicles. Please provide clear and detailed answers to these questions as appropriate.
Once you have entered all the required details, the Complete Section button will appear in the bottom right of your screen. Click this to go back to your list of assigned motor vehicles form sections. The last section of the Motor Vehicles Declaration form is the Excess Franchise section. This section contains questions about your agency's excess policy. Please read the instructions in blue explaining the difference between excess and franchise. Then provide your answers below. Once you have entered all the required details, the Complete Section button will appear in the bottom right of your screen. Click this to go back to your list of assigned motor vehicles form sections. You can download a PDF copy of your declaration form at any time by clicking the Download PDF button, which is available within every section of every declaration form. This will generate the contents of the entire declaration form, including all of the sections within it, as a PDF document. You can use this function to support your internal review and approval processes or for general record keeping. We recommend downloading a PDF copy once all form sections have been completed and saving the file to your preferred location. Once all of the motor vehicles form sections assigned to you have been completed, the Submit button will appear in the bottom left of your screen. Please make sure you hit Submit and confirm your selection once you have completed all of the sections within your assigned task. If you are a coordinator, the Submit button will only become available once all of the sections within your assigned declaration form have been completed. Once the coordinator submits a completed declaration form, it will go to the nominated approver for that form. The approver will receive an email advising them that they have a new task pending their review and approval, and they will be able to access this task from their dashboard. Once you submit a task, you will receive an email advising you that the task has been completed. The completed task will now appear in your completed task list, which you can access from your dashboard. For additional guidance and videos on how to navigate and perform operations within our online declaration system, including instructional videos and cheat sheets on completing specific declaration forms, please follow the links on this page.